things. Yeah. Forget the baggage and yeah. just treat them as they should be treated, inshallah. There are so many people out there, just like yourself, soul searching. They are trying to find a spiritual home, really. Yourself, you were in that mode before you became a Muslim, and the trigger was this conversation with a friend about death. How do you advise, or what would you say to the Muslims who are trying with some people they know, whether a relative, or a friend, or a neighbor, or a colleague, and this person is almost there. So what would you tell them so they can make that switch? And that night happens to them so they can go yes, and think. And the next morning they say, this is the path I, mean, I want the, to choose. The Quran as a percentage gives us the approach. Like 90% of the Quran is emotional, emotional spiritual. 10% is intellectual. So that's the kind of dose you should give to people. Like, God's existence and the Qur'an being a miracle is very easy. You could do that in five minutes. It's intellectual gymnastics. But the implications yeah. of that is the difficult thing, the emotional thing. So one thing to do is to remind them of God's love for you. Because the Prophet Muhammad upon him be peace said that God loves us more than our mothers love us. True. And to understand that God is really... If you want to summarize the Qur'an, God is basically screaming at us saying, You are slaves. You didn't choose your birthday, your birth, your ethnicity, your gender, your name, your DNA, your socioeconomic status. You didn't choose any of these things. You're enslaved to context. You didn't choose the ism and the schism that you're conditioned to believe that beauty means you have to be like, I don't know, L'Oreal because I'm worth it, right? <laughs> or, you know, all that stuff. You're enslaved to social context and to your own context. You have so many slave masters, your boss, your parents, your boss's boss, society, your politician, your senator, your governor, everybody wants something from you. And they don't really know what's truly best for you. And God says, hold on a second. I'm your Rabb. I'm your master that loves you and nurtures you. And I know what's really best for you, so connect to me. Free yourself from this slavery and liberate yourself by worshipping me. It is no wonder the word ruh, the soul in Arabic, in the Qur'an, shares the same root as the word raha, which means liberty and serenity. So the ruh, the soul, wants to achieve this liberty and it can only be done so by connecting with your, with your nature, which is to worship God and to love Him. Worship means to love Him, to know Him, to obey Him, to serve Him. Yeah. And if you do that, everything falls into place. But people are so busy worshipping themselves and their own ego. And that's the problem. And that's, that's Islam. That's the most simple way of putting the whole narrative. And that's why the famous poet, Iqbal, he was the poet of the East, he said an amazing poem. He said, this one prostration that you find too difficult frees you from a thousand prostrations. Allahu Akbar. Yeah. This is a beautiful statement and note to end this program with. I wish we had more time. It's very interesting and I pray that we get together again and Shab. we do much more programs about this spirituality aspects of Islam and the spiritual approach to bring people to Islam. That's what people want. Many intellectuals there, materialism is controlling everything and people lost their souls and they need somebody to guide them. Thank you so much Brother Hamza for being with us. My we pleasure. appreciate it. And may God be with you, Amen. guide you, Amen. and guide through you too. Amen. Thanks again. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this episode, and we look forward to seeing you again. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be with you.